Today or tonight, tomorrow is known as God's Tug or God's Day. One of the reasons why it's known as God's Tug is because we, in Davini, for the last 10 days, we constantly said Hamelach HaKadosh instead of Hakel HaKadosh. Now we're giving Hashem back his name. We start saying Hakel HaKadosh. So therefore it's called God's Tug. But he got his name back. Okay, we're up to the bottom of the page, Tezvov on the base at the very bottom. Tony Rab Tachlifa Achud Ravanoi Chazoi. Everybody repeat themselves. Rav Chanina Rav Tachlifa, the brother of Rav Chanoi Chazoi, said the following: Kol Mizanoisa Shaladam, that your panasa and all of your asses, everything that you need, what person needs for the year, Suvim Loi Mereisha Shana, has been ordained, uh, and from Rosh Hashanah, the Ad Yem Kippur, until Yem Kippur. What exactly does that mean? So our version of the Gemara says that from Rosh Hashanah, as if Hashem decides on Rosh Hashanah what's going to happen until next year, Yom Kippur. Which means if something happened out of Yom Kippur, it was already ordained the previous Rosh Hashanah, not this Rosh Hashanah. That's one meaning. Other Rosh Hashanah, we read over here, K'tsudim lo'i me Rosh Hashanah va'ad Rosh Hashanah, that Hashem decides on Rosh Hashanah till next year, Rosh Hashanah. And anything that happens following next year, Rosh Hashanah, was ordained that year. However, the Gemara tells a story, and I haven't seen anyone in this Gemara here um, <clears throat> draw reference to it, but if you remember in the Gemara Bar Basra, the, feud, the Gemara talks about Zadok, and the Gemara tells a story there, Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai had a dream that his nephew and niece are going to lose 700, I can't remember the exact sum, maybe it was 717 um, of the dollars of, of that country. So he went over to them and he said to them, um, uh, why don't you start giving Zadaka? He started pushing them, pushing them to give Zadaka. By the time the year was up, they gave $700 to Zadaka, not $717. And the Gemara then says that on Edda the Yom Kippur, the tax collectors came and took the $17. And they said to him, if you already knew, why didn't you tell us? And he said, I want you to do Lashem Shemayim. But it was Edda the Yom Kippur to do with the previous Rosh Hashanah. So it's clear from that Gemara there, that it's ordained from Rosh Hashanah all the way till the next Yom Kippur. <clears throat> but there is another version like Gemara there that Yechel ben Zakkai had his dream with Yom Kippur. So it's actually ordained from Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah is judgment, but Yom Kippur is when the Debesh makes the final decision. Bottom line is that everything is judged, how much we're going to earn, and there's no point in working any harder because you're not going to make any more than Debesh decided that you should get. What does not come in the Cheshben is Haitzah, Shabbos, Haitzah, Yom Tif. All your expenses that you expend for Shabbos and for Yom Tif, for your meals, for guests and all that is not part of the Cheshben. Haitzah is born of the Talmud Torah and also your tuition. If you spend less, you will get less. And if you spend more, you will get more. In fact, all, all the yeshivas around the world should use that and say to people, you shouldn't have a scholarship. Because whatever we charge you, they shall give a reimburse you anyway. So don't worry about it. Um, the only problem is Rashi says that the Abel show will provide you the money pretty soon after or after a while. And that's the problem. How are you going to live till after that while if you're going to pay all this money? But um, interesting that Yishalmi, the way Yishalmi says it is that Hashem ordains everything on Rosh Hashanah except Tishrei. So on Rosh Hashanah against Judge and Hashanah is a chutz metishrei. What's tishrei? It's Rosh Hashanah. Tov is Talmud Torah. Shin is Shabbos. Reis is Rosh Chodesh. So the Yishami adds Rosh Chodesh as well. And Yud is Yom Tov. So those are the things. And what exactly are the expenses of Rosh Chodesh? It's not exactly sure. There used to be a meal on Rosh Chodesh, but that's not really what they're referring to. They're referring to something else. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, the word continues. Amravu, my Korah, how do you know that this is an amazing thing? Everyone knows that Rosh Hashanah is Yom Hadin. We say it in, in the Sinai Taikif. Yet there's no mention of it in the Torah whatsoever that Rosh Hashanah is Yom Hadin. So you might ask, how do we know that Rosh Hashanah is Yom Hadin? Says the Gemara, my Korah, how do we know? Our Pasik in Tehillim. 
Tiku Bachoy the Shafer. You blow the Shafer. In fact, this is the only place where it says Shafer as well. The title doesn't say it. Bakesa, the Yom Chagenu. Bakesa, the way Rashi learns it, is when it's hidden, when the moon is hidden. Which Yom Tif do we have when the moon is hidden? It's only Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of the month. Tosis learns Bakesa means when Rosh Chagenu is hidden because nowhere in Davening do we talk about Rosh Chagenu. On Rosh Hashanah Davening. Which month is it that the, that the Yom Tov hides? Have you ever Rosh Hashanah? You see what it says in the next passage. And Choyk, this is the time when Hashem makes judgment for the Yidin and Mishpah Lekei Yaakov. It's amazing how Rosh Hashanah, the most important day in our calendar, Yom Adin, there's no hint of it in the Torah whatsoever. Nothing. Shafer, the main mitzvah, we have to learn from Gzeri Shabbos, and we have no idea what it is. We need the passage to Hillam to help us out. And, and so on. My mashma the high chayk nishan the mezayinu who. So you're saying that Eivishan decides then what our panos will be for the year. The word chayk, how do you know? Could the chsiv we find elsewhere? Uh, Pare he says v'achlo es chayk mashnos lem Pare that you could, when you told Yosef you could tax everybody, but not the koinim. They're entitled to whatever they're entitled to. Azut ram ma'machem here it says the pasuk hatifeni lochem chukay. It says it says a mishlei that. Um, don't give me wealth. Give me, um, give me my chukai, which is my food. We said about Shammai. He lived the whole week with Shabbos. In fact, that's why in the Shir Shayyim we say every day, every day of the week, we remember Shabbos. And he would do the same thing. He bore an animal. He rather said, this is reserved for Shabbos. He found a nicer animal. We would say, okay, Zulu Shabbat, this one should be the Shabbos. But then on the Tuesday, he found a nicer animal. He leaves go the second one, and so on and so forth. Hill had a different way. Don't think that he wasn't caring about Shabbos, but he did everything. He had enormous betochen and a moon on Hashem. She never says, Baruch Hashem, yayim, yayim. He would, he, every day he believed. Come Friday, I'm sure I'll find something valuable for Shabbos. Yeah, unbelievable amunah. Tanya, nami yoch, we'll have a Shabbat, Shabbat, from the beginning of the week, the Shabbat, you should already think about Shabbos. Baruch Hashem, yen, yen. And in, in Allah also, we lord Be'i Shammai, as well as Be'i Shil. Amar Abcham, Abed Abchanina, Hanoi Samatana Chavayda, if you give a gift to your friend, ain't Tzorich Lohaydi, you don't have to tell them. You can give them secretly. She never says, when Moshe Lo Yoda, he caught on her pala. Moshe Beno had his halo around him, but he had no idea. Hashem didn't tell him, even though he gave it to him as a gift. May say, we'll ask you a question. It says regarding Shabbos that Hashem said, you know, tell the Eden, I'm going to give you, keep my Shabbos. It's a sign, Beni Ben Echem, Ladas, so they should know that I'm making them holy. So Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, tell them that I'm giving Shabbos a gift. And the Medjah says, I'm not going to borrow Moshe. Moshe, I'm going to tell you yesterday, basically, I have a beautiful gift for the Eden. The Shabbos was called Shabbos. When you make a little, you saw. I want to give it to the Yidden as a gift. Leich v'hoidiy lehem. Go and tell them that I'm about to give them a gift. Mekan nomer of Shemini Gamliel. And Shemini Gamliel says based on that, Hanoisin pas latinik. If you want to give a gift to a child, let's say food, tzorich v'hoidiy lima. You must tell the mother. You have to know that you want, as Rashi explains, you want to um, increase um, harmony amongst Yidden. So this way, you give a gift. Let them know. Not keep it discreet. It's more like kasha. Oh, but I'm a gift that eventually the, everyone will know. You don't have to bother telling them. Eventually, they'll come and find out where it came from. You don't have to tell them. Oh, but I'm not to a bread, let's say, the kid can eat it up. Or um, something that people won't know, you have to tell them. So you know, Shabbos, you won't know. Shabbos, nami maton of Everyone knows what Shabbos is. As the trader, what do you mean you won't know? It says, maton of Of course, we'll tell them about Shabbos, but they won't know the reward for it. And that's the gift. Shabbos is a gift, and therefore, I want them to know. Sorry. Oma we learned. pass a thing. Give bread to a child. You have to tell the mother. My ovidle, how do you inform the mother? Shaiva Mashka, you smear some oil on the forehead, and mother cook like you paint the eye. So when you come home, the mother will say to the child, What's this? Where do you come from? And the child will say, Oh, I met this person over there, and by the way, he goes and got a piece of bread with it. That's how the mother will know. Says in the and the Khachin, the child, if a child comes home with these kind of signs on their face, people will be a little worried and concerned. What's going on over here? This kind of witchcraft, who knows? Papa Whatever let's say bread, put some breadcrumbs on his on his face. So they'll realize what's going on. 
Every mitzvah Hashem gave it to us, Nosal and Befesh, and Har Sinai. Chutz Mishabbos, Nosal and Betzinah gave it to us discreetly, she never says, Beini Uvein Bnei Yisro, Oisi Lo Eilam. Between me and the Yid, this is a secret thing. Says the Gemara, I Hachi, if so, Loila Anshu Nochim Alei. So then Goyim shouldn't be punished. And the part of Shadi is, it says in Marshall and Hedrin, that Goyim are not allowed to keep Shabbos. But if they don't know about Shabbos, why should they be punished for resting on Shabbos? Says in Marshall, Shabbos, I do, I do, and everyone knows about Shabbos. Matz Chod, I do, and the secret is what the reward for Shabbos is. You boys say, Matz Chod, I do, even the reward for Shabbos, I let them know. But Neshama, you say, I do, I do, on Shabbos, we get an extra Neshama. And Rashi says that the extra Shem is that's why in Shabbos we feel so much more expansive, we are so much more relaxed, and we are so much happier, and we can eat and drink a lot more on Shabbos than throughout than the rest of the week. If we would try to eat the meal that we eat in Shabbos during the week, we wouldn't be able to finish it. But in Shabbos, somehow or another, we managed to finish it. That's the Neshama Yisaida. The Oira Chaim HaKadosh says a beautiful pshat. In Vishamru that we say in Davani, Baini Bay Bene Sro Oisi La Ilum, Kishesh is Yam Osa Sam Samayas Aritz, or by Yama Shi Shabin Offer. So he said like this Baini Bay Bene Sro, between me and the Jewish people, Oisi. It's a special sign that I love you, and that's why we have the Shabbos, and I give you this additional Shama. Abala Ilum, what do we tell the rest of the world? Why are we keeping Shabbos? So you know what we can tell them? Kishesh is Yam Osa Sam Samayas Aritz. Something that they can, that's palatable to everybody. I know Hashem created the world for six days, rest on Shabbos. But the real thing about Shabbos is to make that special connection between us and Hashem. So as you can further, well, um, the Shabbos, every Matzai Shabbos, we lose it. Shinema says, Shabbos, Vayinofash. What do you mean, Vayinofash? We rested, Vayinofash. Kivan Shabbos, when Shabbos is over, Vay of the Nefesh. Vay, woe is lost, we lose out of Hashem, you say and that's why the big argument by Yom Tov is Hashem Yisrael as well. We didn't make psalmim tonight. We do psalmim with say Shabbos to calm us down. We lost down Hashem Yisrael. But with say Yom Tov, we don't. It seems that we don't have an Hashem Yisrael. So then the question that everybody talks about is, so how come from Shabbos to Yom Tov we don't make a bracham psalmim? We're losing the Hashem Yisrael. So it seems like a little bit of Hashem Yisrael is left behind. So that it's not enough that we have to use some Masai Shabbos, but Masai Yom Tif, because on a little bit left behind, it's not bad enough, sad enough that we need to use something for that. Says the Gemara further, going back to uh, Eid of Tafshilin, all the laws of Eid of Tafshilin are from right here in this Gemara here. We learned a little bit, not so much the law, but the theory behind it in, in uh, Psach and Daphne above it, Rabba Rabchiz. Says the Gemara, Oisa Adam Tafshil me Eid of Yom Tif. And you, what you do is you cook something up before Yom Tif, and whatever you're doing on Yom Tif is a continuation from what you cook. We had an argument here, we're doing it to honor the Shabbos, so you make sure you have food for Shabbos, or we're honoring the Yom Tif that you shouldn't prepare for Yom Tif to a weekday. I'm going to buy you the Bayi, like Shem Nola Tafshin. says that you have to cook something, like uh, an egg, or a piece of fish, or meat, I will pass away, but not bread. My Shema passed away, why not bread? If bread is not good enough for a cooked item. We need something to eat with bread, something to cook to eat with bread. Or pasta, we'll have to eat bread with bread. But daisanami, what about this thing made out of, um, out of uh, what do you call that, lentils, or that is, that is very, a very heavy food, like a porridge. To lay melafta, you don't eat that with bread, you eat it on its own. Kodona b'zeda hani bavloi tipshoi, these foolish Babylonians, the ochli nama benama, they eat bread, with uh, with bread, something made out of barley or something, and they eat it with bread. Doesn't make sense because it's filling enough on its own. You could use, you still can use that for the aid of for the aid of tafshilin. So why can't you use bread? We need something which is uncommon. You need something a reminder. Having bread put aside is not a reminder because you have bread in every meal. And daisa you don't need daisa that often, so therefore it's a good enough reminder. So <clears throat> we'll see later in the Gemara that we, we need a cooked item and uh, there's, um, there's an argument with the bread as well. We'll see them in. I'm, I'm sorry, where are you holding at the moment? Where are you holding? Adaptezain. Oh, sorry, somebody say our scroll. 16, so about 10 lines to the bottom. 16A3, uh, the yep. left-hand column, second last paragraph. Thank you. What's the third word on the, what's the first word on the line, please? We're in the Gemara or not? Scroll. Gemara. Chicha. Should be the same. Chiach. Chiach. 
Ikedami, another version, which is basically the same thing, but regarding the Daisa. But here we said that Daisa you could use because it's not common, so it's a good reminder. But the Ikedami, another version is, I'm going to buy a Lashon of the should only cook food, I will pass up enough bread, my timer. Something which is uncommon in the past bread, but the ice is not common. And according to this version, you shouldn't use that for air top shilling. You need something that you eat together with bread. Bread, obviously, you don't eat with bread. And the dice, nor do you eat dice. This porridge with bread. Eat bread with bread. Okay. Tony Rabchia, Adoshim lentils, Shibishule Gdeda, that you, you cook the food and you have some left over in the bottom of the pot. Seimich Aleyen Mishum Eruvi Tavshilin, you can rely on it for Eruv Tavshilin. No, you, you don't have to cook a special food for Eruv Tavshilin, you can take leftovers inside the pot and use that. Bahani Mili, the Isbu Kazayas, you need to have a Kazayas. We're going to, we're, if we hold that you need bread as well, we'll talk about it soon. When it comes to bread, we say you should have the size of an egg, like a, like a little bulkula. When it comes to the egg or anything else, you need the size of an olive. Same thing, we have fat stuff over a knife. You peel it off, scrape it off. The same olive mushroom, you can rely on it for eight of shilin. So interesting. So when it came to the remnants in the pot, doesn't say you scrape it off. Sounds like you can leave it in the pot and use that. When it comes to the to the knife, it says you should scrape it off. So the Alter Rebbe Shkonaruch is very pedantic, and he says with the pot, you can use the pot itself. When it comes to the knife, you have to scrape it off. The Mishnah Brewer says on both of them, you should scrape it off. Where he gets scraping off in the pot, I'm not sure, because the Gemara clearly omits that. Lamaisa, we do use bread for we'll come, to, we'll come to the Lamaisa soon. Yeah, but it's the one question I wanted to ask you was in a few lines back. It says Ailit Tavshil Aval Pat Law, and it's got the little Aleph integrating that to Halacha next to that. So what happened there? That's talking about as far as cooked in order to cook on Yamtiv. We haven't talked about yet if you want to bake on Yamtiv. So in order to cook, you have to have a cooked item. So it has to be something that cooked that you eat with bread, not bread. And hence the egg. Hence the egg directly. Amravasi, dogim ktani maluchim, salted little fish, ain't behem mishum mishuli nachim. Salted little fish, there's no bish, the rule of bishalaka we had in the way is that something that you couldn't eat raw and the goyim now cooked it to so made it edible. We don't want you to eat it because we don't want to get too intimate with the goyim, because of chasnus, one of the reasons, because too, we don't want to get too intimate. But these salted fish, since they could have been eaten raw, therefore there's no problem of bishalakum. <clears throat> Um, what do you mean you can eat them raw? Because they were salted. If they were salted, like herring, if they were salted, you can eat them raw. So therefore, when the guy takes that salted fish and cooks it up, didn't really achieve anything because you could have eaten it before the guy cooked it up. So there's no real intimacy here because you don't feel the benefit. Um, Is the guy, can he eat salted? Yeah, yeah but you know, we're, talking about, we're talking about a herring or something, a fish that's salted. Yeah, you but, can eat but it if right it's now. Not salted, if it's not salted, the guy salts it, then it's like he cooked it. Yeah, but we, we say that salting is kiraseach. We don't say that salting is like cooking. We say salting is like heating, which is different. All right, if in tzala nachri, if a guy consulted, yes. The the in tzala nachri, if a guy grilled it, say mechalei and meshum eidet tashilin. The guy went ahead and cooked it. Not only can you eat it, but you can also use it for eidet tashilin, because it's a cooked item. The e of dinu nachri kasa the hasne, but if the guy ahead went ahead and cooked. A uh, kasa de hasne, that fish that is fried in its own oils and also with, you use flour and you, and, you, and you pan fry it in flour, that's forbidden. Because why is that forbidden? Because flour couldn't be eaten raw. And therefore the guy cooking improved it. So Resting you know, is not cooking? Sorry? Resting is not cooking? Sorry, say it again? Roasting is, is not cooking? That's salted fish and therefore it's all right. And you oh, could have eaten okay. it before he. Here we're talking about fish that you couldn't eat raw. The guy cooked it up and used flour. And because he used flour, um, okay. I would have thought, I would have thought that has in the ikka, I would have thought that the fats of the fish is the ikka thing. And therefore, maybe you could have eaten it raw as well or salted, it didn't matter. Kamash, whenever there's flour, 
The main thing is always the flower part. Therefore, there's Bishul Akum involved over there. Um, and then Tejo talks about over here that you're allowed to buy bread that has eggs in it, because Pasa Akum, technically, if you cannot buy Jewish bread, you're allowed to eat. And if it has, it has eggs in there, we don't care. Because look, hey, this fish also sometimes put eggs in there. We don't care because we assume most eggs are kosher eggs. Most eggs come from kosher chickens. And even if you might worry about a blood spot, once you use it already, we're not, we're not worried about it anymore. You follow the rive. And therefore, it takes that you'll have to buy, you know, a bread with eggs, an egg chal or something from a goy. If there's no eating around, pas akum is all right. Or pas palter from bakery, as we had in Morava Yisorda. And therefore, um, we're not worried about the eggs. Ibailu, kazai, okay, sorry. Amr Ababa, Eidim et Tavshil Zich Kazayis. An Eidim et Tavshil requires a Kazayis, the egg, a piece of fish, whatever it is, has to be a Kazayis. Ibailu, Kazayis Echad Lakum. Let's say that 10 people that are going to be joining in in your Eidim. You need one Kazayis per person. I didn't look Kazayis, the Cholech of Echad. Sorry. One Kazayis for everybody, or you need a Kazayis for every person. Toshma coming here. The Amr Ababa, Amr Ababa, Eidim et Tavshil. Eidah Tavshil and Tzricha Kazayis. Eidah Tavshil requires a Kazayis. Bein le'echa bein le'echa. Whether one, whether you're a hundred people. Tanam we learned. Achloi. What happens if you by mistake ate your Eidah Tavshil? Oisha Avad, you lost it. Lo yevashil Allah b'tchila. Then you go, you can go ahead and cook now. It's too late. Even though you prepared Eidah Tavshil, but if it's gone, by the time you're ready to cook on Friday, you can't rely on it. Shayim and men koshu. Let's say a little bit was left behind. Let's say you, uh, you put a big challah and you, you start eating the challah without realizing that this is there, it's and then you, and you, you caught on and you left some challah. Say, I love the Shabbos. You can rely on Shabbos. So we're going to ask a question. You said you need a kazayis. Here it says if you have left over a koshu, it's good enough. My koshu, love doesn't mean afagab the leka kazayis, even if there's less than a kazayis. Says, you might know the east of kazayis. Well, koshu means I don't care what size challah it was when you started, as long as you ate part of it and you left a kazayis. You can still go ahead and cook based on that. Toshma, come in here. When we say tafshu, when we say a cooked item enables you to cook for Yom to Shabbos, they include sli, whether it's roasted, I feel a kavish marinated, shalom stewed, or mavushal just cooked. And he says, and the kulias ispanin, a salted fish that is very tender. You can eat it the way it is raw, but they put on it some hot water to, to uh, they usually just put a little bit of hot water on it and that makes it ready to eat. There's a singe it. You put a little bit of hot water, so you might think, well, technically I can more or less eat the way it is. I just put the hot water to make it 100% good. That's not really cooking. So maybe it does not enable me to cook from Yom Tov to Shabbos. Sorry, sorry. Then is that is good enough. It says, it has no share. Women has no share. Um, my love ain't like sheer cloud. That it, there's no real amount. It sounds like from here, it doesn't really matter how much you put away for cooking. But it says, no, ain't like sheer lamaila. There's no maximum. The yes, like sheer lamata. The minimum is a kazai when it comes to cooking. Omar Abhuna. Abhuna said, Omar Abhuna, Eruvi Tavshilin Sikhadas. When you make an air Tavshilin, you have to uh, be aware, cognizant of what you're doing. Think about Shita. Das but there's no question that the person who's making their tafshilin has to be aware of what he's doing. The question is, Das If I have in mind somebody else, do I have to um, tell them or not? As you know, in today's Sadurim, when we say Eretz Tafshilin, you'll see tomorrow's Gemara about people that they used to have. You know, the, the rub of the city used to have in mind the whole city, but today in the Nusach. It says, everybody has in mind everybody. So, Tosh Makamni, Abu Shmuel, the Father Shmuel, Ma'adev, sorry, it says right here, the Father Shmuel, Ma'adev, Akul, the Doi. The Father Shmuel used to make an Arab and have in mind the entire city in the Doi. Abami Rabasi, Ma'adev, Akul, Tveria. Abami Rabasi had in mind the whole city of Tveria. And it seemed like they didn't even tell them. Um, so, therefore, everybody can have everybody else in mind and they don't have to know. Anybody who didn't make one, he would make an announcement. You can rely on mine. How far does his aid of Tafshilun go? Anyone who's within the distance of Chum Shabbos, we assume automatically that he had in mind. If they're beyond the Chum Shabbos, we assume they didn't. 
which sounds like, but if he clearly did have them in mind, it's good enough. Our Samya, based on that, we learned, was a blind person, but he had a wonderful memory. He remembered all the prices, and he would say it, before Mashmol. Chazi Rabbi Atash, Rabbi Shmuel saw that, that this blind person was sad. Amalei Amaya Tzivi, why he said, Amalei Gloi Tzivi, Beit Hashun. I forgot to make an Eit Hashun. Amalei Sumay Chadidi, no problem, Belay Amai. The Shana, the following year, Chazi Rabbi Atash, he was depressed again. Amalei Amaya Tzivi, why he said, Amalei Gloi Tzivi, Beit Hashun, because I didn't make Eit Hashun again. Amalei Pashayat, now it's very negligence. Le Kuli Amashadi, everyone in the whole world can rely on my Eir, but Le Didah Chasa, you can't. If you're negligent or you're in making a tavshilin, you cannot rely on someone else's Eir tavshilin. That's why we make Eir tavshilin. We give it to someone else to pick it up. So that, and, and so we say to that person, be zeiche on behalf of everybody. And then you take it back and you make the bracha. And you shouldn't give it to your child. Try to give it to another person. The worst comes to worst, you give it to your, to your wife. But there's a shayla there as well. Are you really like one person? So you start giving it to yourself. Turn around, we learned. Yom Tov Shecholi is better Shabbos. What happens if Yom Tov falls on a Friday? Eima Arvin. If Yom Tov Friday, you cannot make an aid of. You cannot make an aid of Tchumen. And on, on Friday, for Shabbos, you want to make something for Shabbos. You cannot make an aid of Tchumen. Nor can you make an aid of Chatseris. You're preparing for Shabbos. On Yom Tov, you're allowed to carry, no problem. You want to make an Erev Chatseris so we can carry on Shabbos from one courtyard to the next. Now, Tchumen, you cannot walk on Yom Tov either. But you want to make for Shabbos. You heard a big rabbi is coming. You want to make Erev Tchumen and Yom Tov, you're allowed to carry. So you want to bring the food out there so you can extend your walking. So, um, so the Tanakhama says you cannot um, do both of them. Rebbe says, Ma'arvin Eiruv Chatseris. You could make Erev Chatseris. Why not? What's the difference? Since Tchumen, you cannot do on Yom Tov on the, for this day itself, neither can you, since you cannot walk Tchum on Yom Tov, so you cannot prepare Yom Tov for Shabbos to make it home. And today itself, you can't walk Tchum. But Chatzair is, since I could, I could walk today from one courtyard to the next and carry things, so I can make an air of Chatzair for Shabbos. But things which I can do today, I can, you don't ask me, I can prepare for tomorrow. Itma, we learned that I've said halacha ketana kama, the halacha ketana kama, which most halacha kerebi. Iboy luhum halacha kerebi lekul lechumra. When you say halacha like Rebbe, are you being, are you learning Rebbe the way we learned over here that it, that he's being uh, lenient, that he allows you to make erev chateres, or that Rebbe is the one who's being stringent that you're not allowed? Says he might have treated the lekul kama, but he says clearly here he's being lenient. So he might explain to you my question. I should have shalach Rabbi Lazar legoyle. Rabbi Lazar sent a letter to. Sorry. Rabbi Laza sent a letter out to exile. You guys in Bubble are learning the wrong way. Rebbe Matev Chacham said, you learn Rebbe is the one who's lenient. And Chacham said, no. Rebbe Oisev Chacham Matev. Rebbe is the one who says it's prohibited. My, so which one is it? Toshma coming here. There are Tachlifa Barab Dime Ovid Uvda Kavasi the Shmuel. He wants to follow Shmuel. Vama Rav. Rav said. Chilas Hayra, the high Shumra Bana, the first sack that this young rabbi just made, Lika Kula. He made a bad one and he's going to have a bad impact. Now, if you tell me that he learned the Kula that you're allowed to make Erev Chatseris on Yom to Friday for Shabbos, Heineke Kula, he's doing something wrong. If you're saying that, that, that the, the Rebbe is the one who's being Machmir, so Shmuel Paschal, like Rebbe, means that you can't make anything on Friday, what's the big deal? Mike Kula Ika, what Kula is there? Says the Gemara, no. If you could make an Erev Chatseris and you don't allow one to, that's bad. Kivan the Mikal Kilabar Rabin, that since people are not going to make an Erev Chatseris, but they're so used to carrying from one courtyard to the next, they are going to carry without the aid of one courtyard to the next, Hainaka Kula. If you're allowed to make an Erev Chatseris, you should allow them to make it. Don't be Machmer, tell them not to make an Erev Chatseris, because it will cause, it will be a Kilkul. Omar Rabbah says, Rabbah, Omar Rabbah says, Omar Rabbah says, Halacha ke Rebbe, the Halacha like Rebbe, which one? The last one to be stringent. That you cannot make an Eid with Chumin or an Eid with Chetzedis on Erev Yom Tif. Okay. Yes.